So I've bought this interferometry setup uh, on eBay from Sam's Lasers. And it's basically an HP interferometer, um, which is a instrument for measuring very, very small distances. So you can measure uh, nanometer kind of deflections with this. And there are some, it's another system I'm building. Uh, I've been building a scanning tunneling microscope and I want to do some measurements of deflections from the, the actuators in there. So it's kind of a, it's just yeah, a system for measuring very small distances. And it does that by using um, lasers. Uh, so um, yeah, it basically measures uh, the interference between a, a reference path and a measurement path. Um, and, and by looking at the, the interference, uh, it, can, it can infer the distance. I just wanted to do a very quick video on this setup. This setup is from Sam's Lasers, and he sells this thing, which is the HP uh, laser head and uh, optical receiver and optical block. Um, but he has his own measurement electronics. So you would there's a there's another unit you can get from HP, um, but uh, it's kind of it's very old and it's kind of um, I guess not not so easily come across these days. Um, so they. Sam and another guy uh, built this system, which is based around the PIC32, um, and he sells a kit of parts for, for this uh, chip kit um, board, and you just kind of wire it all, all up yourself. So I basically wanted to document the wiring up of this system. Um, so he gives you, you need a plus minus 15 volts, and he gives you um, an, old, <laughs> an old ThinkPad power supply, and then this thing, which I guess is a, a, a unit, it looks like a, a new thing, a unit from China. And they're isolated supplies, so you can join the, gro um, the ground and the plus 15, and they give you plus minus 15. Um, so that's fairly easy to set up. Um, the, uh, the other parts you need to, to kind of solder together are... Uh, you need to solder this connector, um, which is a funky, very old fashioned um, connector with a bunch of spade connections on it. Um, and I will post some info. I have posted some stuff on Twitter about that, um, but I will post some stuff on my blog about that. Um, and then the rest is kind of, I don't know, it seems deceptively easy. I guess I have to figure out how, how good my measurements are, but it is it's working with the software. So once you have that wired up, uh, you connect it to a PC, um, you need to install a driver, um, which is the chip kit uh, DP32 device driver, which Sam has on his page. Um, and then you need to, ins to install this software, which I think is it's like some Visual Basic software or something, but it, it gives you um, gives you the measurement information. Um, so just to show it's working, because it will probably break when I when I start um, interfering with the, the beams. Uh, hopefully, can you see the screen? Possibly, possibly not. So you can see that's the display, the measurement display, and you can see um, it's basically stable. The the um, the measurement mirror is kind of just taped to the to the interferometer at the moment, so there shouldn't be any motion at all. But you you will be getting some motion because of like just vibration. This is on an anti vibration table, but the anti vibration table isn't turned on. The mirror is just kind of taped down, so I, I don't expect it to be too stable. And I haven't. I'm not sure I've really done the alignment, but you can see if I just kind of bang the table you can see I there's um, I'm getting deflections caused by uh, just vibration so it's certainly seeing what it's peaking it looked like it was peaking at like maybe 30 nanometers deflection there which, given the mirror is just taped to the thing, seems like uh, not entirely implausible. Um, so I just, yeah, for re for my own reference 
uh, partially I just wanted to document what's actually going on here. So this is the laser. Um, this is the optical receiver. Uh, this is the interferometry block. Um, and this is this is the plane mirror to just taped to it. So you can see so, so it seems like laser optical systems, laser systems, having a <laughs> scrap of white paper seems like almost obligatory. Um, but uh, you can see the laser, the laser coming out, um, and this is this is a two frequency laser. So they use this something called uh, the Zeeman effect to get uh, a laser beam that has two frequencies that are a few. Yeah, it's two frequencies a few megahertz apart, and then it uses the interference between those two frequencies to do the measurement, um, which is a bit more complicated than a normal, um, than the kind of normal interferometers that you, you generally get, you generally read about. You can see the laser is coming in here. Um, it goes into the interferometry block. Um, there's a beam splitter in here, so the measurement uh, measurement beam kind of goes off and it ba it bounces around I think a couple of times and then it then it comes out uh, sorry the reference beam uh, bounces around a couple of times and then it then it comes out so it's just does just a fixed kind of distance and then this would be the where the measurement beam comes out and it the measurement mirror would be attached to your actual uh, you know the thing that you're trying to measure the deflections on um and the the measurement beam i think also bounces back and forth like twice and then and then comes out the other side so to align it um you get these two beams coming out uh so you get this is the this is the incoming beam at the top and so to align it you have to come up from the bottom because if you interrupt this top beam obviously you don't you don't get anything out anymore it doesn't just doesn't go into the interferometer so you kind of you can do it with so there's a setting on the on the uh, laser to use the full kind of beam or just a little bit of it um, yeah so this is the the laser going in and then yeah this is this is it going out and into the photo so you have to get the measurement mirror so it's lining up uh, with the reference beam on the output so this is this uh, this output kind of beam is a combination of the reference signal and the measurement signal so you have to get those lining up with each other I believe and then you have to also get them lining up with the photodiode but once you've done that it basically it basically just works so um, and then I needed to hit reset on the software and then it all kind of figured itself out and worked. So, yeah, so that's basically, it all seems to be working and that's the basic configuration. You need to have the photodiode such that the, the laser just kind of comes across the top here um, and then it bounces through. So it, there's not much clearance between these two beams, right? Um, it's just a like a, less than a centimeter maybe so you need to get get those aligned so um, this hits the mirror kind of uh, this hits the interferometer fairly high up and then the output beam comes out lower down that's the basic idea uh, so yeah so what else is there the wiring was kind of it's all spread out through um, on Sam's laser site, so you have to kind of search around for where <laughs> where the different bits of wiring are. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to kind of put everything together that that you need to build this kit in one place or place on my blog. Um, but yeah, just a quick uh, overview of that system.